Here we go. Three, two, one. Boom! And welcome to the Big Honker Podcast brought to you by Boss Shot Shells. I'm Jeff Stanfield with the world famous Andy Shaver. Telling you what, there are more fucking flies in this building. It's because it's cold outside it's cold and outside. y'all leave the doors open. I don't leave any door open, Jeff. Andy, you do it all the time. You when bitch I come all the in, time. When I come in, that door closes right behind me. I'm like an old lady. You're letting the hot air out. Ah, got that one. Letting, letting all my cold air out and letting flies in. Well... That's a good thing, I guess. I guess. All right, with us today from the great. You're from. You're in Missouri, aren't you? Kentucky. Kentucky. Well, hell, that's close to Missouri. Yeah, well, about. Yeah, yeah. I'm right. I'm right. I'm probably forty five minutes. Y'all from have Missouri. electricity in Kentucky, right? Um, we have a couple windmills and people on bicycles. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, Just want to make we, sure we y'all had it. The man, <laughs> the man with the tatted up penis. Mr. Matty Robertson. Hello, Matt. How you doing, yep. sir? I'm doing good. I need a round of applause. That, <laughs> Definitely. Are you the are you the only pro fisherman <laughs> on the tour with a tatted up penis? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that's probably <laughs> true. Yeah, that's probably right. Jeff's gonna get a tattoo by Dirk, so y'all have y'all be blood brothers, basically. Yeah, I'm not getting yeah. one on my penis. I thought about messing with Dirk. I thought about messing with Dirk and telling him I <laughs> how, is t- how bad was that? That had to be top ten, like top two worst things you've ever gone through. It's a different type of pain, buddy. Like, I'm going to tell you, I'll be honest with you. Like, it, uh, it's, it's almost a scale, you know, from the base to the tip on how bad it hurts, just so you know. But it, it's like... It's a totally different type of pain. And, I, dude, I'm telling you, I have the highest pain tolerance you've ever seen hardly. I can just, somebody, like I told Seth Fighter's wife that, and she's like, oh, you can't. You ain't got a high pain tolerance. And she grabbed the underneath, the fat underneath my arm here and twisted as hard as she could. And I just looked at her. I was like, can you do it any harder, you know? And, uh, yeah, dude, but it, that was something else. It, like, it hurt. But, you know, I'll be honest with you. It didn't hurt bad enough I wouldn't really? do it again. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do it again. Wow, hundred percent. Now, <laughs> I just gotta ask this: How do you keep an erection while another man's got your dick in his hand? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we didn't have to do all that, man. And uh, you, uh, you, you got to do that and get the stencil on there, and then, uh, and then after that, you're good to go. Mm. Dirk's Dirk's not very pretty, so yeah. I don't know what I would have done. No, it was it was a grueling <laughs> process, buddy. It was grueling. You know, he got to do this on the Tiger King too, I think, and I, I yeah, think Tiger King probably yeah. liked it a little bit more. I'd say <laughs> probably so. I'd say probably so. No, man, it's pretty incredible hearing to tell the stories about about tattooing them and whatnot. It's uh, it's Dirk's pretty one of wild. the coolest cats out there right now. I mean, yeah, we, he is. We went to Game Fair. He's it's awesome. Really, it's like. Like they, Dirk is one of the coolest, most interesting people I have yes, ever he's met. Very, he's very uh, thoughtful in the way that he interacts with people. I mean, he's very, he's a very, very deep and deep individual and an old soul. Oh yeah, he he is a very old soul, man. So Jenny, dude, he's genuine, and yeah, I love, I love. The I would say he's a very spiritual person. Just the ebb and flow kind of. He he could have been a hippie. I think he is. Oh, I ain't no doubt. He kind of. I think in like he's like a a natural hippie. Like you think a hippie, and you gotta you know you kind of picture him as looking a certain way. But he's just like he just is a hippie. Yeah. He don't try to look 
not, he just yeah, he's not a pretender. Is. He's just he's just he's comfortable in his own skin. Oh, what yeah. it is, and that's refreshing because so many people are trying to find their own way. And Dirk is just like, I'm Dirk, and if you don't like it, then sorry. Well, yeah. was your significant other was she impressed with your uh, tattoo? <laughs> no, she said I was. I uh, quote, "You're fucking stupid." <laughs> <laughs> That's I, a quote. Uh, <laughs> I yeah. bet she's not the only person that said that either. <laughs> oh no, I ain't no doubt. I ain't no doubt. Uh, now, well, she hated it so much we had to get a divorce. So that's all right too. <laughs> so let, let, let me ask you this: your your, your sponsors. You, you, bass fishermen yeah. are about like NASCAR drivers. Y'all got more fucking stickers and shit on you. Would you consider turning your body oh, yeah, into yeah. an art spot other than the uh, pro You're, bass deal? You already have. Well, he's just got the bass master deal there, right? Well, bass and American flag. Yeah, like 100%, 100% for the right dollar amount. I will tattoo fucking anything <laughs> on me for the right dollar amount. And it ain't as much as anybody. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't some astronomical number either here, boys. Like, we're not talking like, oh, you got to give me a million dollars, Trav. We're talking about reasonableness <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bargain. I'm I'm the best deal in town. Like, we're, we're at the fucking we're at the fucking dollar we're at the fucking dollar general tattoo. Not fucking you know, not not in two damage. How, how I'm much a bargain. how much would it cost for us to get a dollar general tattoo on your neck? Oh, that's a tough one. Mm-hmm. Oh on my neck? That might cost you a little know, bit because it's how, on my neck. Well, my best friends in high school's got Walmart tattooed right here on his side. <laughs> so what's what's a Dollar General? What's a Dollar Hard General neck tattoo gonna run? Fucking neck tattoo, like yeah, right, right on your here? neck, right, right, right across, like a prison tattoo, like a prison. But tat. a Dollar General done by Dirk. How much would it cost? Just, just the, the Dollar General, whatever their logo is. I'd do it for five grand. Wow! So if we raise five grand, you'd have a Dollar wow. General neck tattoo. That's cheaper. Oh, fuck, man. Y'all got enough followers, y'all can say that. That's what I was thinking. Please, God. <laughs> and every time someone watched you on TV, they'd be like, we paid well, for that we, tattoo. Man, we paid for that tattoo. I don't know if I don't know if you could fish that way. Oh, I think shit. I think the bass uh, tournament would have something to say about that. Why? It's his neck. A neck tattoo? Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, neck tattoo. I'll tell you what, for goddamn seven grand, 100% <laughs> fucking do it. This went up $2,000 already. <laughs> Brandon Sarecki just texted me. Brandon yeah, Sarecki just texted me. He's been mowing me that seven grand right now, so we can stick that up. We got an ad- we got an advance. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, <laughs> that ain't no shocker. We got that an advance no on this. So. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, to Dollar General it, with the Walmart tattoo. How does that even come up? Your friend that got it tattooed on them. I'm not even joking. He's still in high school. Blue letters, Walmart, literally right here on the side, Walmart. Squared up letters and <laughs> everything love for Walmart. real. Just loves Walmart. But ain't no joke. Oh, he got in there and be like, hey, do I get this guy to spray his shirt up? That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Nah, but just so, I want to get into this walleye fishing fiasco that we saw not too long ago. So, yeah. Do do they not have like you when you're out on the water? You've got ca- camera crews, and is yeah, there yeah. like an official judge in your boat, or is it just the camera crew and they know that you can't get away with any shit? Now, so on the Bassmaster Elite Series, like um, only ten of us will have cameras, and the rest of us we have um, what they call a marshal in the boat, and they're sitting there, kinda. They're they're there for two reasons. One, they want to be there and watch you fish. They're a fan of the sport. And second is they're also there to kind of police you, make sure you don't break any rules. And, and yeah, just, you know, pretty much there to police you, make sure everything's on the up and up, you know, like, but these walleye tournaments, like there had to be nobody that had to just be totally done on the honor system. Yeah. Yeah. So the walleye tournaments are done. They're, they're team tournaments. So you got two people in the boat and, and I haven't really seen any walleye tournaments be televised quite like the bass fishing is. So what happens is, that, you know, they'll go out there just those two, those two, and it is the honor system. And, and man, it's, 
I actually did a podcast two weeks before that happened. And it was on a walleye podcast of all things. It's kind of coincidence. I don't like, and the dude said something about, yeah, there's been some cheating happening walleye fishing and, and it kind of gave the sport a bad name. And I thought, man, I've not ever heard of walleye fishing cheating. Like I thought maybe he was just a little bit blown, a little bit of smoke, like no disrespect to him, but I just kind of what I thought I thought. And Damn, two weeks later, if I don't see this damn TikTok and shit all over Facebook and Instagram and these walleye guys pulling weights out of their bellies, that's what I thought. Okay, hey, maybe okay hold drunk. on. I just got you an know? update from Brandon Sarecki. Uh-oh. He said, if you will do dollar gentral, like my grandkids call it, and it has to say dollar gentral, He'll pay the seven thousand dollars to have it done. No, you don't want to misspell tattoo. Andy, you stay out of seven this. Seven grand. I'm, I'm, I'm on, I'm on Maddie's well, behalf. Gentral. Uh, yes, dollar gentral. <laughs> redneck dollar, like they say in Arkansas, dollar gentral. Uh, you tell him to get dirt to get the fucking tattoo gun ready because we'll do that shit. <laughs> and you're gonna come down here. You heard it, don't. Hey, listen. He knows. They know. Don't test me. They know. <laughs> Uh, okay, shit. It, December 7th, 8th, and 9th, the Boss Boys are going to be here at the Lodge. Dirk's coming up here. Lee yep. Chose is drawing me a tattoo for my... Right the tattoo, okay, guy. you can do it here. 100%. Oh, my goodness. Seven grand, and you're going to have a, 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 a tattoo. A dollar gentral. Dollar general, <clears throat> a gentral, they know everybody in the rednecks call it gentral because they're missing a tooth or two. Your ass is going to get rich I because dollar gentral is going to pay you a sponsorship fee an astronomical one now. Who's Dollar General? That's Dollar General. They know people say it. Mm. <laughs> they, they should. Did. They know. They they make their money off poor white people. They know. <laughs> oh, I, I shop there all the time, buddy. I just bought me a damn new Swiffer and a dustpan and a broom and everything. <laughs> damn, damn some some and conditioner and all that. I even damn dial soap. <laughs> I went to Dollar General yesterday also. I was out of deodorant. See there? Deodorant, toothpaste, and Q-tips is what I got. And some light bulbs. <laughs> I didn't go to Dollar General yesterday. so it pissed, They piss me off, though, because I, I'm like a one holiday at a time kind of guy. We just got through Halloween. Thanksgiving's coming yep. up. Those motherfuckers are already on to Christmas and New Year. And and, and then after, after oh, Thanksgiving, not. they're going to be on to Valentine's Day. It's like one fucking holiday at a time, people. So they piss me off. Uh, hey, hey, buddy, I did buy me a nice Christmas candle, though, because I thought I might have a little old lady over here little for a little lady. bit hanging out with me. So I thought, damn, I better get me one of them candles to make the house smell good. <laughs> Christmas Shit. candles the romantic ones. There ain't nothing like dropping panties to the smell of evergreen. So, uh, so were you out of the last time we had you on? You were in, you were in your uh, your trailer. Are you still in there, or have you moved? Yeah, I'm still in so my you, got to, you got to keep the trailer in the divorce. Yeah, yeah, I got to keep the trailer in the property. Yeah. So you're not moving anytime soon. Like we asked you, like whenever you, you whenever you're big on this uh, bass fishing turn, you know this tour. Like, are you still going to be there? And you're like, fuck yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here for life. No, oh, yeah, I'm in the trailer, buddy. Like, yeah, like whatever. Like you think some of the ladies would shy away from it, but I haven't really had that <laughs> no. issue. Yet. Have no. you had any of them seen the um, tattooed penis and was excited <laughs> about it, or did it scare any of them? Um, no, it's, it's kind of shocking. You get a, you need to get a, you need to get a pull start on that thing. I don't know. Hey, I'll tell you what, whenever, whenever I get there, I'll show you and we'll see what kind of reaction. Yeah, you, know. off. you need to get a pull start put on it. That's what you need for them date nights. <laughs> see, I, Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> I wouldn't have enough canvas on mine, so like yeah. it would just stop at like an inch and a half, and then it would just be it'd be disappointing for everybody. Mine would be in metric, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. More numbers, yeah, but smaller centimeters. I yeah. can do. Damn, he's got a forty-seven <laughs> centimeter penis. You know, there. That, that's a lot more tattoo. <laughs> oh God, that'd have to hurt like hell. That's a lot more tattoo time. You don't. Want no, to do that. no, but. Uh, I'm more excited about this Dollar General neck tattoo. I can tell. I'm telling you Looking right now. You, I have a feeling that Jeff and Brandon are not good for one another. This is a great thing, though. Brandon is coming up in a private jet to pay for a guy to get a Dollar General neck tattoo. That is uh, that is the American dream right there. I'm telling you. 
Oh, I know that. Yeah, we've done been down this road, yeah. Brandon knows yeah. <laughs> like, he knows it. <laughs> oh shit. What were we talking about before Brandon started? Oh, the, the walleye fishing tournament. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the walleye. walleye Small potatoes at this point. What my, else did he say? My, yeah. uh, hold on, I got a question about that. How the hell were those, would those fish have survived with them, with them weights and those, those fillets down inside of them, or would they have died of it pretty quick? Oh, fuck yeah. No. Uh, no, man, I don't, I don't think they would have survived. Like, I don't see how they could really pass them through, but honestly, like, Blood poisoning is a real thing, and I think they don't at least die from that, you know, from lead poisoning. Um, but no, man, like, and and that's what kind of shocked me is is a lot of the walleye fishermen. It seems like like that tournament they didn't have to be alive, and I don't know. I don't know if there's a penalty for uh, live fish or not in um, in what or dead fish or not in walleye fishing, but. But yeah, it's pretty much the honor system. Like, I'll be honest with you, like from the outside looking in, if I were them, I would I would take like I'd make them all run GoPros, because we all have to run GoPros and whoever wins, like make it mandatory that they have to turn that footage in and and go through it, you know, to make sure there wasn't any foul play go on. Well, I think the way to fix this is to turn them some bitches loose and and make them go to the next big walleye fishing tournament and chain them fuckers up to the boat ramp and just let the guys take care of it themselves. And there would no there ain't no nobody doubt. would cheat again. And I'm gonna tell you something. I heard something actually this morning about that. And Dave, I'm gonna tell you if this is true, this is some bullshit. Like, and I just don't see how it could be true. But it come from a pretty good source. They said that those walleye fishermen were only going to get a twenty five hundred dollar fine and not be able to fish for five years. I bet that. Uh, I bet that's right. I so no, I, I don't think it's that. <clears throat> I think it's a felony. Well, let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you there. There were two bass fishermen got got caught cheating here on Kentucky Lake, and and they got caught with fish in a basket, and and if. They didn't win the tournament, but if they would have, it would have been felony charges and whatnot because it's over X amount of dollars, like grand right. theft. And, and, but because they came in like third and only won like five or 600 bucks, um, they got, they still, they lost their fishing license for five years. They were both fined like 30 grand and, you know, they got in some shit, but but these boys, they want enough money for it to be some. I just that's why I don't believe it because there's enough money that they want there to, for it to be like a grand theft deal. You he, know? Here's why I think that it probably is what you heard is probably true. They're first time offenders. They can't prove that the fishing tr tournaments before them that they were cheating in. So that that has nothing to yeah. do with it. But we but we all <laughs> but we all know that they probably were fucking cheating the whole time. But. It's twenty five hundred dollars. The jail don't want them. They got enough fuckheads in jail right now. Anyways, they don't want to put some fishermen in there, and they're gonna find them twenty five hundred dollars and fish. First yeah. of all, nobody should ever let them fish in a tournament ever again. Anyways, but I, I oh yeah, oh, they'll never fish. Like I hate to tell, like they know, they know they're done tournament fishing. You know yeah, that, yeah. and you know they're a bunch of fucks. And I'll be honest with you, like like I'm surprised. I don't know if uh, like regardless of the region of the country it was in, I'm going to tell you, if that shit happened here, like my old fishing partner, Wendell, I'm going to go and tell you, if he, if he busted somebody doing that, like ain't nobody stopping him from getting to him. I can't believe somebody that messed him up at the ramp. You know? that, that's that's where you're, they're going to get their justice. It's going to be country justice, but a $2,500 fine and no, probably probation right. for it five years. It says it right here. It says the charges are fifth degree felonies, meaning they could each be uh, bring a punishment of up to 12 months in prison and the twenty five hundred dollars oh. in fines. They probably did, don't want to do prison because prisons are overcrowded. That's the duo it. also face a misdemeanor count of unlawful ownership of wild animals, a charge related to raw fish fillets they allegedly had in their boats. I can't so, believe they can't get the right. cruelty to animals too, though, for stuffing those fish with that stuff. If they want to be an asshole, they could do that also. Let's hope. Let's hope that they do twelve months in jail. They'll, they'll never do that. But if that's yeah, no, I know that, but I'd like to, yeah. 
we all want to say oh, yeah. that, but they're not going to do They pled not guilty. Well, fuck yeah, there. That's where everybody does. Oh, really? Fuck yeah. You don't. I mean, why would you plead guilty? You're going to get the same penalty maybe, anyways. Maybe, maybe show when the, mercy. When those cops show on mercy the side, on when me, those judge. cops on the side of the road saying, "If you'll work with me, we'll work with you," right. they're lying. <laughs> they ain't work with your ass. They're going to bury your ass. <laughs> they catch your ass. They need to. Uh, the best thing happened to them old boys if they get about twelve months in jail with Big Bubba, mm-hmm. and they become somebody's wife for twelve yeah. months. Then. Oh, I know that, that that would do it. No but doubt. you can't make people like that good people. That's just a dishonest cheating. I don't give a fuck if it's an election, a fishing tournament, a varmint calling contest. When you cheat someone that's like that and does the same thing you do, you're that's a horrible disgrace yeah. to what you're doing. I mean, you just I'm with yeah, you. Like, it's unreal. Yeah, it's just a bullshit deal. And who could call themselves? You know that some bitch probably went home and told his wife, "Listen." You're going to get a bang, a, a walleye fishing champion right now, knowing he was cheating the whole time. And she probably knew it, too. Yeah, she probably didn't know it, man. Like, it's it's unreal what what people do for – and I'll be honest with you. Like, you got – like, I'm not, I'm not giving them an excuse whenever I say this, but it's like – I swear I think part of the problem with people like, like those guys cheating is – not only the money, but you know, the like the social media recognition that they get out of it, you know, because they're, I guarantee you, they're posting they won this and won that and fucking getting, you know, they want that glory and it ain't fucking earned. It wasn't earned, you know, yeah. properly. Yeah, no, that's right. And I mean, when you put that up, when you put that much money on it, and it's not a controlled, uh, it's not a controlled environment. You don't have a uh, warden in the boat. You don't have anybody to moderate it, like. This shit's going to happen. I'm like you, though. Everybody put a GoPro on. It's so easy now. You press record yeah. and you're done with it. If you win, if you win they, like, the, they ought to go through all that footage now, do you, to make do, sure. Since you have so many people on your boat, is there a polygraph aspect whenever you're in these fishing tournaments? Absolutely. Yeah, we get... There's two random polygraphs, and if you win, yeah. Even with the cameraman yeah. in the boat and the guys that have the... Uh, moderators yeah because yeah because there's rules like no information rule like once the schedule comes out we're not allowed to get information and once you qualify for the bassmaster classic you're not allowed to get information so so yeah there's uh there's other rules other than the the on the water rules now how do you have you had a polygraph yeah, I've had a, I've had eleven polygraphs. How? What are you life. like? Because I, I think even if I didn't have anything to hide, I would still be nervous. So, so I gotta tell you, man. Like, I got nerves to steal. Uh, my fishing partner for four or five years, whenever we won, we won five boats and won a lot of big money tournaments and had to have polygraphs. Um, I always t- and he's state Kentucky state trooper, and I'd always take the polygraph like no reason. I just have nerves to steal, and it doesn't bother me a bit and um i actually know the dudes that usually do the polygraphs one's out of murray here another one's out of nashville and they, they do most of them and and i'll be honest with you the one the one guy from murray got mad at me one time i tell you how much it doesn't bother me is i was sitting there taking the polygraph and he told me i want you to lie on the odd number of questions and tell the truth on the even I was like, all right, and I'm sitting there, and I'm answering the questions. He's like, I told you to lie on the, on the odd numbers. I was like, dude, I'm fucking lying. <laughs> like, I don't know what. He's like, he's like, no, you're not. I said, dude, I fucking am lying to you. I can't help if your fucking computer ain't good enough to pick up on it. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, it ain't my goddamn fault. Like, I don't. They don't fucking bother me a bit. And, uh, but now my buddy who's state trooper, like. And they polygraphs in general make people nervous. Yeah. Like, but they just, the first one I took, I was a little, I wasn't really nervous, but I just kind of, hey, you just chill, answer the questions. It's whatever. They ain't that bad. They, they strap, two, they strap, there's a, like, it, it's like a two bungee cords that'll expand with your breathing. Mm-hmm. One goes around your chest up high. Another one goes around your torso, you know, above your belly button, about, about at the bottom of your ribs, um, blood pressure cuff, and a couple of sensors on your fingers. And yeah, man, it's fucking, that's no big deal. Andy's ass, though, I'm telling you right now, he's such a nervous fucking Nancy. You would flunk, a, they could ask you what your kids' names were, and you'd flunk that just telling them their kids' names. 
Yeah. He has no exactly. bullshit in him at all. Like, I don't think that'd bother me. I've taken a couple of she, them. Yeah. But I don't bullshit. She, I can yeah. bullshit anybody, so that don't bother me either. Boy, Andy, yeah. though, he's fucking nervous Nelly. He'd fuck up every time. But then if yeah. you fuck up on the truth telling, then they can't tell when you're lying. So I'd be so nervous they wouldn't be able to tell shit from me. That's my strategy. Everything's going to be everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, no shit. Dude, I'm telling you, if, you, if you're the type of person to get nervous, they're going to hammer your ass. <laughs> Like not because you're nervous, but because they like it's them telltales will tell, you know. But they, I don't mean the dude. Like I lied to the dude from Nashville, and he had an old school machine. He had an old school paper machine where the arm goes back and it's and it's scraping it. Now he could tell I was lying, but the other dude, the one time, that's the only time like I answered the questions that like it, it you know, he told me to lie that I that he couldn't tell, and. But, but yeah, that old school machine telephones line. Really, but the new one couldn't. Yeah. Huh. Switch, switch. Hey, I saw a video of you. You were shooting the new uh, Mossberg, the 940, right? Yeah, yeah, the 9J. I was shooting the uh, 940J M Pro. <laughs> Dude, let me tell you something. So, that thing is fucking badass. I got a 940... Uh, pro field too and i'm actually i'm fixing to, i'm gonna try try the 410 out on the waterfowl and uh, on the ducks and the geese and uh you know then to november 1st of december but but dude i went a couple weeks ago i went uh to south carolina my buddy uh one of my sponsors the wood shop in anderson south carolina they uh, build custom cabinets and they, they they travel all the way to key west and all over doing these nice custom cabinets and uh they sponsored a couple teams and went out there this uh, sporting clay event. And there's only two of us on a team. And there's this uh, this guy there. He was like, "Hey, y'all need a extra person?" I said, like, "Yeah, come on with us." It's four man teams, and there's only two of us on this one. And he's a uh, old pro sporting clay shooter. And we went out there and we were shooting, and and I was shooting pretty good. Like the first three rounds, I didn't miss nothing, and. And I noticed he was shooting different. Like he didn't, you know how you put the the stock up against your cheekbone yes. there and shoot a shotgun? Well, he kept the stock below his chin and his head dead center of the of the barrel. Didn't you didn't look down the barrel, no pin, no nothing. And I asked him about it. And and we got to this one and he's like, Yeah, you know, I don't aim down the barrel. It's kinda it's almost like instinct shooting. He said he aims, but he aims different you know he doesn't look, look down the barrel with a pen and i missed like four or five on this one that shoots out like a rabbit jumping across and he's like he's like try it he said try it so i stuck i stuck the barrel or i stuck the stock right under my chin and i just and i swung with my hips bam bam i didn't miss really? another one after that and that's how i've been shooting ever since and dude i don't i'm telling you as crazy as it sounds I don't hardly ever miss shit because well, I saw that video and I thought that it looked like you had an awkward stance and that's what it is. Yep. So that's what it is. That dude taught me how to shoot better. And than it's I've just ever all off of instinct basically. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Cause yeah, it's all off of instinct. Fucker. Jeff, that's why I, I need to do it that way. Like, like you're, you're aiming because your eye, like the right. gun center, center right. eyesight here. Right. You're still aiming with your eyes, but you're like this. And one of the keys he he taught me, and I haven't tried like I haven't tried this with the ducks and geese, but I'm fixing to try it. Like with the with the clay, like say you're bare, you point your you get the line of sight where the where the clay's going, the pigeon, and you let it pass your barrel up, and then you catch back up to it right whenever you get up to like get on it, mm-hmm. shoot it in the ass. And if it's going perpendicular to you, like straight across from you real fast, you'll go oh, right in front of it. And you just they tell telling you like it's unreal. Sure. Fucking dude was I've been doing insane. this wrong for all these years and I didn't even know it. Dude, I'm telling you, we shot a hundred shots in that dude, and it was a bad day for him. He hit eighty five mm-hmm. out of hundred. And I, I hit and I ain't gonna lie, <laughs> I hit eighty. But I think a lot of that's because he taught me how to shoot real quick. <laughs> But and that was a bad yeah, day for yeah. him. I'm telling you. So you're uh, you're uh, shooting a Mossberg 940, and that's what we just got. We got we got a couple that are have been delivered. Yeah. We just signed a deal with them, and the, we're going to be shooting them. The and, new Mossberg 940 waterfowl gun. 
So I'm excited to get it. Well, I'll have it tomorrow. Dude. Dude, I'm telling you, like, you'll like them. They're good. Fat. Dude, they cycle really? fast. Like, they're a hella good gun. I, lo- I love them. You can miss three times them. real fast, That's Andy. right. No, not, not with this new shooting tactic. I'll, ne- I'll never miss again. I ain't, I, I'm serious. You think I'm crazy? No, I saw you, you, hit, crazy. I you, saw you hitting the uh, targets. I don't think you're crazy at all. Whoa, whoa, hold on. Crazy is such a broad term. We got a guy going to get Dollar General on his neck. He's got his dick tattooed. He's a fucking moneymaker, Jeff. Well, what he is. What do, you want, what do you want from the guy? How much would it cost for us to get Dollar General on your neck? More than Andy? seven grand. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you, have a fun, you have a fun life, don't you, Maddie? <laughs> I do, buddy. I'm going to tell you, there ain't many people that have much more fun than me in life. I got to tell That's you. That's what honestly, life's about right man. there. So many people, man, we are we're, we're, we are so blessed to be able to make a living doing something we like so much and to not, not have to strike yeah. the iron eight to five, 52 weeks a year. We are lucky. We There's some days we work a lot, but it's a good life. And, man, you're so blessed. Yeah. And get to be. So, yeah. That, so you're going no to doubt. Montana with Zach, the boss guys. And, and Snow Bunny's yeah. going with y'all, right? Or snow, what do you call him? Snowball? Yeah, Snowball. 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 And uh, Seth Fighter's going. And, okay, and uh, our buddy Jakey Powell, he builds uh, PPF mud motors, you know, some small mud motors for like 12 foot 10 and 12 foot boats. And yeah, man, we're going to go. Uh, I don't know. We might go to the Dakotas, you know. That'll be fun. We just kind of play it by. Did here. you go? We'll drive to the sea. Who all went to Canada? You weren't on the Canada trip, were you? That was Dirk. Dirk and Zach. No, yeah, that was Dirk and Zach. They wanted me to go. And I got to tell you, like, I was down for going, but Canada didn't pass that unvaccinated bullshit. So where you can go over there yet. So, yeah, I'm like, I'm going (laughs) next time, though. My fat ass is going to be right there with you, too, because that's exactly why I didn't go to. And now that I, I'm not getting the vax, I crossed the border at, at Niagara Falls three weeks ago and gave him that deal. And yeah. that's the first thing I told him. He said, yeah, you've been to Canada on a while. Eh? I said, fuck no, I wouldn't get a vaccine, but I got one now. Yeah, that's exactly I'm right. Going. Andy's going to go too. Andy just got to have to work it into his youth coaching football and his wife and his kids. Listen. Those kids can make it without you for a week in their life, but okay. Like even a couple of guys, even like three or four days, whatever. Like, yeah, you just need uh yeah, no offense, like just kick them to the curb for a week. Yeah. Just kick them, just boot them. It ain't the kids the he's scared of, it's his wife he's scared of. <laughs> I'm not scared of anybody, Jeff. Oh, I'll kick her yeah. too, buddy. She'll get She'll used be to fine. it. Come back and do a little makeup, give her a kiss on the cheek, tell her how much you love her. Maybe, dude, all you got to do is buy roses. Roses, dude, I thought roses were expensive. Like, if you buy roses, you're talking about like $70 <laughs> for a dozen big ass red roses in this big vase full of damn red fucking uh, leaves or whatever the fuck's <laughs> on a damn rose and goddamn full of it. And all you got to do is give that to her and that fucking fixes everything. <laughs> and a Christmas candle. <laughs> and a Christmas candle. That that gets yeah, her in the mood Christmas from Dollar General. About $4. <laughs> See, for, for about $83, you can go to Canada. 83 Don't bucks, you can go to Canada. <laughs> that's all. That's the way you look at it. That's that's true. <laughs> you spend 83 fucking dollars at Dollar General. You bought the whole fucking store, though. I think they put your picture up. Yeah, yeah you're shopper of the year. <laughs> so is are you a Dollar General guy like every day? Do you go there? I don't go there every day. I'd say once a week. Once a week, I for sure. If they carried steaks, I'd probably, yeah, I probably wouldn't go nowhere else. But yeah, they ain't got no do steaks. They, do they get your, is anybody asked for your autograph there? I mean, you're a celebrity. So do you get a lot of autographs in your hometown or are you just that stupid fucker that got lucky? You want to know what the weirdest thing is? Is at home is where I get asked the least amount for autographs. Yeah. yeah. Have you done autograph in Knox City yet? Uh, no, I, mean, I have not. <laughs> Like, like, I'll, like, I'll run into some high, some a lot of high school anglers at the boat ramp and stuff. But other than that, like, going to the boat ramp and getting asked for it. But, yeah, it's whenever I'm out of town is whenever I really run into Yeah, it. nobody gives a shit about who. They're just like, oh, that's, that's Maddie. Man, we don't, we yeah. don't care. Yeah. Most yeah. of them. I mean, stay, away from, stay away from Yeah. Me. But I will say with the flux of deer hunters up here for rifle season this week, every time I've been out to eat the last few days, which I don't go out to eat that much, but I have the past few days, um, 
like every time I'm out, a group of guys comes up to me. That's just because deer season's is, in. Is where you are, has it got like a big deer population? Is it this deer mecca that people flock to or what? Oh, yeah. We got magnum magnum bucks down here. I know. I know. It seems like up north they go by body size a lot. Like my buddy up in Maine, they go by body size. But here we got, dude, like 150-inch deer. Like 150, 160-inch deer is real good deer, but it's not nothing out of the norm here. Like, people shoot 200-inch deer here every year. I saw one today on the side of the road that scored 130, and I stopped and looked at him. I could imagine a 200 one. 200-inch deer? I would have poached him probably because oh. I had a rifle with me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Boy, I boy fishing shot one two, two years ago, 200 oh. inches. Like, What's in the... I'm not saying 200 are running around yeah, everywhere. But but a, if, if it like, happened, you're not shocked. One, no, well, I'm not shot. I'm not. Yeah, no, I'm not shocked. I'm not shot. I'm not like a 170. You're like, yeah, damn, that's a big deer, but it's not. It's not like the holy grail. Now, or are anything. you a big deer hunter, or is it just something that you know you might do once in a while? So I gotta tell you, man, I used to deer hunt a lot. I've killed quite a few deer. Not no, not no 170, 180s, but um, but I deer hunted a lot, and I had to give up a few hobbies, and then I got back hunting again, and. I got to tell you, I like to pull the trigger way too many times for fucking deer hunting. <laughs> I can't see get up for 20, 30, 40 more. However, like 20, let's say rifle season two weeks or three weeks, whatever. I can't get up for 20 something days, go out there and set all those days to pull the trigger one time. Now, listen, if you want to put a corn pile out there and get about 30 deer round up around it, give me an AR with 30 round clip. And let me see how many I can kill. I'm down for that. But let me tell you something. I cannot. I just can't pull the trigger once. I like waterfall. I want to go somewhere where I can pull the trigger. Right, yeah. I'm the same way. I'm the same way. And here, uh, deer season came in, what, a week ago? A week ago, and it goes to January 1st. It's like, fuck, you're going to hunt six yeah. weeks? Or longer than that. Six weeks. And pull the trigger one time if you're lucky. Yeah. Maybe shoot a doe or two. That sounds terrible. Yeah. No, it's, not, it's just not for me. I like... I like and it's not, you got to go out there and you got to be quiet and all that shit. I like, I like going hunting where I can be with some buddies, bullshitting, having a good time, even turkey hunting, you know, me and, me and Seth will go turkey hunting and we're hanging out, bullshitting, walking, you know, whenever it's time to kill one, we get, you know, you get in the killing mode, but it's just, yeah, dude, I, I've grown less fun. I like to eat deer. But I've just grown a lot less fond. But I think Fighter's going to come out. He's got to be. He'll be in Texas in April. I think he's going to come out here and try to shoot a turkey. So that'll be fun. Nice. Uh, hopefully, hopefully I can get him nice. on one. This last turkey season yeah, was we, uh, awful out here. So hopefully that rebounds for whenever he's out here. Yeah, well, we uh, he came up went turkey hunting down here last year. He came up had a couple. I think we only had two days or two and a half days. Something like that. And he's like, you think we'll be able to kill some? I said, oh, yeah. I said, listen, dude, turkey slaughter. <laughs> like, we're going to kill them. And one of our buddies uh, has a good farm, and he let us go out there. And uh, and he hadn't killed one yet. And we go out there. We averaged a turkey. Well, we averaged a turkey an hour Jeez. each day. Like, yeah, that's the way it went down. Like, it, we're going to – people ask. And then people ask me those. They're like, "Do you hunt?" And I'm like, "No, I fucking go kill them. Like, it ain't no fuck. I don't like to hunt. I like to kill shit." <laughs> you're honest, at least. So, and, and what, you're a professional yeah. fisherman. Like, I would think that there would be this immense amount of patience in your soul, but there's, there's, there's not. Like, there, you're always got a. You're an action junkie. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I am. Like, I got, I got patience to wait for the action. Like, I'll sit there and wait a little bit for the action. But you're right. Even turkey hunting, I don't like sitting and wind or nothing. It's like, we're running yeah. and gunning. What, uh, when, does fe- when does fishing season? When's y'all's first big tournament? Uh, it starts, uh, the first tournament starts February 26th. And, uh, but, and so we'll be down there two weeks before that, a week to kind of get back in the groove, and then another week to, uh, and then that we'll start practicing for the tournament. And yeah, we'll get started the middle. Where's of the first tournament at in te- East Texas? Uh, like oh, at least to be warm down Florida. there, at least. 
I hope, man, every once in a while that cold, that cold air will still sweep down through there in February, unfortunately. But, yeah, we got two in, uh, two in Florida and then the Classic in Knoxville. When is that? When is that? Uh, the end of March. You boys need to come. I'm gonna. We're gonna be in. We're going to Nashville, aren't we? Yeah, for the Turkey Federation. Yeah, that'll be in February. When ends it? Uh, I don't know. I have to ask Zach Meyer, boss. He's the yeah. one in charge. Yeah. So, well, so, hey, listen. I know y'all boys will be able to come because Zach will be at the Classic. It ain't the same weekend. Oh, well, there you go. No problem. Andy's scared of his hey, wife. I'm telling you, <laughs> it, it'll be worth your time going. I'm telling you. Really good time. Yeah. But uh, it's a great time. It's a hell of a time. It's a hell of a time. Hell of a show. Hell of a time. Hell of an expo. You boys would enjoy it. I want to get my picture made with the vice president of Dollar General when he's next to you with that <laughs> tattoo. I'm telling you right now, this is a oh, marketing no. thing right here. Buddy, I'm telling you, I would tattoo sponsors all over my body and fish without a damn shirt on <laughs> for the right amount of money. I'm going to go into my Dollar General today, and I'm going to go, listen, Maddie's getting the neck tattoo. I want a 10% discount. The Maddie neck tattoo discount. I'm going to tell her that's a new thing. And our, the lady there, she gets very easily confused. I might talk her into getting me 10% off, and I'll just use it every time I go in there. You might. She might. If she gets confused easily, she might hit that zero extra time. But it's all for free. Well, I don't want to go to jail for thieving from Dollar General. Can you imagine getting caught well, shoplifting? Buddy, if she put in a 100% discount, <laughs> yeah. that ain't thieving. But can you imagine that happened to you going to prison? What'd you get caught for? Oh, I stole from Dollar General. That'd be fucking embarrassing. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure somebody's in there. Um, yeah, somebody's in. Somebody's in prison for stealing from Dollar General. Hundred percent. I hope it's an accountant. I hope he got millions out 100, of them. Hundred percent. Somebody's in there. When did the When did the fishing season end for you guys? I feel like it wasn't that long ago. No, man, it wasn't. So uh, the Elite Series got over in August, towards the middle to the end of August, and uh, there's some. There's a little bit smaller tournaments. There's still big tournaments, but a little bit smaller tournament. There's an open left at Lake Hartwell, and a couple of us fished it in September. But yeah, we pretty much got over, uh, or that was in uh, the first October. But we pretty much were done the end of August, and it'll be the same way this year. We'll be done the end of August. Are you just fried by the end of it and just ready to do something else? You know, yeah. Every Every year you're, you're ready to be done right. and, and, but you go home for a couple of weeks and then you're like, damn, I'm ready to go again. Right. Fuck this. Let's go. Yeah. It's time to fish. Yeah. I'm the, I'm the same way with what, like, it sounds bad. It's eight, eight days in and I'm like, fuck, it could just be over tomorrow. I'll be fine. That but, does sound yeah. horrible for all the clients that are coming to <laughs> Someone's going to say that to you, too, in the next two but weeks. I've, I've, also, I've also been fucking sick for the last two days, too. So, like, that's that's yep. part of it. We also live this life year-round now. Right. It's not the, like what you're just starting into meeting around clients. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm like, it, 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 it could be over and I'd be fine. But um, when it – I was really, really excited, you know, and, you know, we're just now getting going and everything, but uh, – And we're killing the shit out of them. The cold fronts will come, and then that'll that, – that breeds excitement. But I'm like you, though. Whenever it's over about a month, you get into turkey season. Once turkey season's over, you're like, okay, let, let's rock and roll again. But by the no, end of it, no, you're, no. Just, you're just beat to death. Just beat to shit and ready to not – be on the water again or not set another a frame you're just like fuck shit no yeah. he's going to dollar ginger buying buying love making candles he's happy life's good that's right baby <laughs> i'm ready to get back to fish now boys <laughs> <laughs> will you do any fishing in the off season yeah yeah i'll i'll do some uh i'll do some more fishing and i'll fish a few tournaments on kentucky lake just to keep it fresh you know and uh yeah i'll do some winter fishing because especially here, because the duck hunting don't get real good. They don't really get here like they used to. Like, we'll get some divers on Kentucky. Like, I'll go shoot some divers with my son and whatnot. And, uh, but, but yeah, it's you better off to fish here than waterfowl hunt for damn sure. <laughs> what do you have to keep fresh? I mean, uh, whenever you go to wintertime fish. Oh, just, just the, the process of going out there and finding them and, and just just keeping the fishing, you know, hunting them down and whatnot. Just keeping all the fishing skills fresh. So did but you? No, you know, 
go ahead. Go I'm ahead. sorry. Did you know Fighter before uh, t- getting on the 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 fishing tournament circuit? Yeah, I actually knew him a couple of years before I qualified for the Elite Series. We uh, we become friends. Uh, yeah, I mean, two years before I before I qualified. So y'all were good buddies before this. So this this wasn't something that came up because of you know getting on this this circuit. No man, but we were we were good friends before, and uh, and now I'm gonna say that since I qualified and whatnot, like it wasn't and it was. I'll tell you this: we were good enough friends. It wasn't even a question of who I was gonna be traveling with. Oh, like really? we knew I was gonna be traveling with the boys, and. And I got like, I gotta say, we became a lot, lot closer friends. Now, is he as good a shot as you are, or or do you take the cake on that? Well, I'm gonna tell you something. Before I'd say no, but now I can't say that. Like I'm telling you, I'm shooting pretty damn good right now. <laughs> that no way of shooting. I even told him. We, me and him's talked about it. He's like, no shit, <laughs> no shit. I said, I'm being serious. I don't fucking miss. It. Like. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, our buddy Kyle, one of Seth's best buddies, Kyle, that uh, hunts with us, he don't miss. Seth don't miss very often, but it don't like he's about like Zach at Zach at boss. He don't miss. Either. I'm telling you, you don't want that. Like that dude will gun him down. Zach doesn't miss either. Zach, have you ever hunted with Zach? No, not when they come out, it'll be the first time. He'll let y'all get done shooting, and he'll peel to. Her two out right after y'all get done really out there huh. he is uh yeah you wait you wait for this shit I'm gonna have like i'll tell you this we had some we i was up there in michigan not with them and we had some geese come in we got there, there's about eight or nine of them shot them all one and everybody's done shooting and He's like, I'm gonna, and he shot. He's like, I'm gonna get to that one right there, and it's flying. He bends down, grabs a shell like real slow, puts it in the gun, throws it in there, comes up, poof, throws it out by seventy yards. I'm like, did that really just happen? <laughs> like, I'm telling you, I ain't never. Seen that. Like, I didn't. I thought there's no chance of him killing one that far. And tell you, I mean, it was unreal. You know the situation. So, if your life depended on it, Zach's the best shot you know? Yeah, him or that cowboy, 100%. I, I, would, I, would, I would trust my life in Zach's hands shooting. There ain't no doubt. He's killer. 100% killer. Well, he's working for the he right company. Like, like he's probably thinking, he's going to hear that. He's going to be like, like, I can't believe you said that shit. I can't believe you told everybody. Because he's asleep. He likes to sleep on it. He won't say nothing. <laughs> he won't say nothing like, hey, like I'm telling you, sometimes he don't even shoot whenever the birds come in. Uh, and but and if some if, if some boys are missing, you know, then he'll be like, All right, you know, we're gonna have to take care of business a little bit. He'll come up and shoot, you know. He won't ever say nothing. He's a sleeper, but he's a hell of a shot. I'm gonna tell you what, boss has the best group of employees of about any company I've ever been around. Just great guys. Mm-hmm. That's 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 a really yeah, good dude. company. Yeah, anywhere from Dirt, uh, Brandon, Zach, uh, Lee Joe, Saldo, you know, the girls working in the office, uh, the people working out in the shop, dude, I'm telling you. They're a great team. I'm telling you, head, head from top to bottom, just good, good, honest people, 100%. So what's going on next for you? Are you going, you going, what are you doing this weekend? You going fishing this weekend? I mean, hunting this weekend? You losing me? No, I got you. Yeah, we got you. We're having some technical. T- okay. Democrats are running the fucking internet. I think nowadays that's all fucked up. Okay. You got me now though. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I got you. Okay. What are you doing this weekend? You hunting or fishing this weekend? Oh man, actually, uh, one of my sponsors, uh, that guy, the, my buddy, Willie, uh, at the wood shop in South Carolina, he, uh, he called me. And he's like, man, I need, I want to get out of town for a few days. I said, so why don't you come up to my place? You know, we'll hang out, maybe go do something, go to Nashville. He's like, man, he's like, let's, uh, he said, you want to go to Key West for four days? I was like, Florida Keys? He's like, yeah. I said, 
fuck yeah, if you want to go to Florida Keys, I'll go to Florida Keys with you for four days. Shit. So I got to be in Memphis and have a meeting with uh, with Drake on Wednesday and go down there and uh, talk with them. And, and then I'm going to uh, drive to South Carolina and get on a plane and go, go to Key West for three or four days. Well, that'd be a good time. Are you a Tennessee fan? He's from Kentucky, Jeff. I know, but he was going to be in Nashville, so I'm asking. Yeah, him. but uh, there's a lot of daggum Tennessee fans where I'm at. But no, nah, I'm a UK fan. So you're so you're a big basketball fan. Um, man, not really so much about. I, I kind of pay attention to their football a little bit, but I know I'm not a Kyle, I'm not a Kyler Perry fan. So, I mean. I don't think he's that good a coach, and I think they may get rid of him. But I, but I guess he's got that lifetime contract. But whatever. <coughs> I think I think he's a good recruiter, shitty coach. Well, there's so, lot, there's a lot of that going on. Ain't no doubt. I think Texas has that same head football coach there. I miss. What are you going to Key West for? Fishing. Oh, well, fuck. You better stock oh, up on them Dollar General candles. Fun. We ain't doing shit down there. We, we may do a little fishing. It's kind of just like a wing, and it's kind of like a do-it-over-the-fuck-we-want trip, you know? <laughs> if we want to go down and fucking party one night, we're going to go down and party all fucking night. And the next day, if we want to go out down, go snorkeling or go fish and do whatever, it's it's a, it's a fucking four days of not giving a fuck about the world. That's, that's a hell of a trip. What are you, uh, the, the hair, have we got a haircut yet? Are we trimming it at all, or what are we doing? Uh, no, man, we're, I'm keeping her a little short up top, short on the sides. And, uh, you yeah. know, I'll tell you what, you won't believe how many people think I dye my fucking hair. <laughs> and it's kind of insulting, especially <laughs> since I got through this little bit of a beard here. Yeah. And it's a little brown. Oh, like, yeah. But it's like, I just ain't been out in the sun for it to bleach out. But shit, no, man, I ain't dying my hair. <laughs> um, like. Whatever. But yeah, no, we're keeping the mall, like keeping her going. It's getting long as shit, dude. Like it it's damn near down to my nipple. <laughs> and like I gotta say I might have to, may have to trim an inch or two off of it just because, but yeah. Yeah, fucking hair You need style. to get you a damn uh, hair sponsor, like one of Aquanet or somebody to sponsor you, you know? Put some product in Aquanet, there. Aquanet, Ravlon. Yeah. Ozzy, fucking three minute miracle, fucking whatever. Yeah, I agree. I need a, I need a hair sponsor, hundred <laughs> percent. Hey, this ain't you're gonna think I'm bullshitting you. I'll be out. I'll tell you, I was out in Nashville one night, and there's these six chicks sitting at the table, and I just happened to turn my head, and one of them snapped a really? picture at me. Swear to God, yeah, the back of me. And she's like, "Oh my God, I'm so sorry." She's like, "You have the best hair ever." She's like, I, "She's like, I'm getting my hair done. I'm gonna tell her tomorrow that I want to pit. I want my hair to look just <laughs> like." I'm like, so that's cool. I don't care, whatever. But yeah, they're like, I'm telling you, I got like it. Don't it kind of looks a little raggedy and shitty right now. But hey, let me get out of the damn shower and blow dry this shit and fucking comb around a little bit. God a mighty son, I'm telling you, they ain't better hair on the fucking planet. I don't give a shit. I don't. I ought to be on the damn box. Have you ever got it? Have you ever got it uh, braided or whatever the hell they call that shit? Were you? Uh, what's that shit called? Oh, shit. shit. Dreadlocks. Listen, let me tell you. Uh, no, no, never done dreadlocks. But I'll tell you what, me and Seth were down there in South Dakota. And on our off day, we, we went out to this little saloon and we walked in there. And there's three Indian ladies, chunky Indian <laughs> ladies up there on the other side of the bar on a Tuesday night. Tuesday night, three chunky Indian ladies, couple dudes at the bar. And we walk in there and we get to bullshit and having a few drinks. And um, one of them said something about my hair. And... This one lady, she had the worst laugh ever. High pitch, got a mighty, <laughs> ugly, and snaggle taste, buddy. Like, I, hope, well, I doubt she'll ever hear this, but I'm telling you, I fucking got awful ugly. Like, I'm telling you, ugly. And had to, but she's cool as shit, dude. Cool as shit. I give her that. Her laugh got, I'm pierce your ear, though, man. Sound like, oh, squawk. And it just, just a squalling sound of a laugh. <laughs> and, dude, so we got, but she's cool shit. We was bullshitting with them. And she's like, let me braid your hair. So I'm sitting over there with this Indian lady, French braiding my hair. And I, the only thing I can think, I was like, damn. All right. So we're up there at Lake Oahe, South Dakota. You know, we're, we're out there, you know, Indian land, right? I was like, this has got to be good luck. I got Indian lady good braiding good my luck. hair. So damn. We didn't have a hair tie to keep it in there, but she, she, <laughs> she tied her, you know, French braided mine. And then. And then she braided Sess. 
She just regular braided sass time. And then, hey, laugh about the good luck thing. I was right. <laughs> we both made the top tens. Both made the top ten at Abahi. And uh, and the Indian lady braided our hair. It's got to do with her. You, she definitely put on some magic uh, juju on you. You need a traveling Indian lady to go That's just you braid need. your hair. Braid your hair before a big tournament. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, all. I'm going to tell you, man, they, they were cool as shit, though, man. We got along with them real good, had a good time, cut it up, and, uh, yeah, dude, got a, uh, yeah, I even got pictures of the hair braided up. <laughs> I'm thinking right here now, this is some advice to young people. If you want to be successful, first of all, in your dating world, if you want to be successful, you got to go to Dollar Gentro and buy the, the love-making Christmas candle. And then if you want to win something and have financial windfall, you need to get your hair braided by a chunky Indian lady in South Dakota. With a bad laugh. With a bad laugh. Yeah. That's that's I, I'm gonna tell you right now, yeah, when I, if we ever go back to South Dakota, I'm gonna go back there and have her braid my hair again. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, like that's I feel like that's the only reason we might have done good. If, if I'm super stupid. Do what so I was gonna ask you about that. What 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 do you do uh before tournaments? Um so before the tournaments, me and Seth say, well, Seth, I just sat there, but I sat there with Seth, and he says this little fishing prayer. And I'll be honest with you, I've heard it a hundred times, and I can't even remember it. We, we, he uh, told us it. Uh, yeah, I time. think he told us it. He's got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he's got it dialed. And I sat there and do the fishing prayer with him. And uh, um, I always listen to the same songs on the way to the boat ramp. Like, yeah, if it's a, if it's like at Pickwick, we had to drive an hour because stupid Corey got an Airbnb an hour from the, from the ramp. I play the same songs. I don't care if I repeat them all for an hour or if it's for five minutes, play the same songs on the way to the ramp. What songs? Oh my God. <clears throat> so it's Jewel. Okay. Save your soul. Save your soul. Santana and Rob Conimus smooth. Okay. And I like that. I like these. No, yeah, it's it's a little it's a little out of character. And uh fuck, what is the other one? <laughs> Juice Newton. No, no, no. It's um what the fuck is his name? <laughs> it's a rapper. I can't remember Eminem? his damn name. Uh, it's a young Dolph song. Young Dolph song. You know who the fuck young Dolph is? Young Dolph I'm is. Too I have, I've not shit. heard this. Young Dolph. I think it's uh, Young Dolph or something Dolph. It's got to be. You go go on that yeah, format. Yeah, major hundred shots play. Yeah, major. major, major, major. Okay, I'm gonna check this out on the way home. So, yeah, this is not out of character for me, but Taylor Swift just released a new album, and oh, some Jesus of hers. Christ. Listen, Jeff, I'm telling no, I'm you. I'm fucking embarrassed for you. Is it good? I'm embarrassed. Yeah. Fuck yeah, it's good. And it, it has brought me limits all season long. Well, she would fucking really? shit if she knew that she were killing animals to her song, that liberal bitch. Maroon by Taylor Swift on her new album and Antihero are fucking bangers that just, it's good luck really? every time. As soon as I pull out of the driveway, turn that turn that fucking bitch on and let her let her play. And, and my neighbors are like, "Who's that homosexual goose guy running around listening to Taylor Listen Swift?" Listen to me. <laughs> I am going to ride this until the wheels fall off. So as long as Taylor Swift is bringing me good luck, I'm going to let her bring me good luck. I'm not going to question the goose gods at all. I'm just going to enjoy the bounty. So by the field you have tomorrow, she is going to bring you luck again tomorrow, probably. I'll listen to her twice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, I'm telling you, you better. Like, you don't mess with the dude. You don't mess with anything. I'm going to be looking for a South Dakota Indian. I've got. I. I. I don't. Uh, I don't change pants. I don't. I do change my underwear though. I do do that. I don't change pants while while yeah. good things are going. You know, just let it happen. Don't be changing shit. I, I used to not change my underwear, <laughs> and I may not for a day or so. But man, if it gets a little greasy down there, <laughs> I'm probably going to go on and swap swap her out. You know. <laughs> Yeah, you have to. A little greasy. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Because that just well, it's different. It's different. Look, with like, with like Seth and some skinny boys. It's like I told him, I said it's different. Like I'm not like I've lost a lot of weight, and I'm not quite as fat now. But still, like it makes a difference when you've got a little meat on your bones and shit gets greasy versus someone who's real skinny. They don't know what it's like to get all greasy down there. Swamp ass is worse on a fat guy than a skinny guy. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's exactly, dude. Damn right. 
Yeah, no, I, I change my underwear every night, though. Shower and all that stuff, but <laughs> it does get greasy, though. Like, listen, during waterfowl season, you 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 poop in some awkward scenarios. Like, you're outside, and you just got to make the best of what you got. Yeah, whenever we go out west, buddy, I've seen Potter go nine days without a shower. <laughs> and I never did smell that motherfucker. That's why I didn't get... I didn't let me go nine days. Let me go four days without a shower, son. I'll smell like damn... Oh, God. Pickled assholes. Smell like a hog house. Yeah. <laughs> nine days without a shower. God almighty. He didn't stink. Could you imagine... What happens when you got to take a shit and you're out in that boat and that tournament with the cameras going? <laughs> oh, but I'll just tell them, like, I don't care. I'm about listen, dude, I got shit. <laughs> and I say, I put the throttle between my legs and I fucking hang my ass over the boat. And I'll be honest with you, it's quite comfortable. Like, I can sit there and play on my phone if I want to, take shit on the boat. Like, it ain't no different. Me shitting off the boat ain't no different sitting on the damn toilet. I'll be honest with you. I see people doing these tricks, hanging off the back and hanging off the front with a rope and doing all this stupid shit. I'm sitting there on the side of my boat playing on my phone while they're acting stupid, you know? Like, I feel like I'm sitting on the, right at the house. <laughs> it's no, no different oh, at all. Oh, gosh. No, 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 no different at all, at all. I guarantee I do it in the damn hunting boat, too. I guarantee next time you got shit, stick, you can put the throttle down so in case something happens, you don't break the throttle, but whatever. Sit right there with the throttle between your legs, and if you do want to hang on a little bit, you got the steering wheel, ain't a seat there. <laughs> Sit right there and tell me if you don't just feel like you're sitting at home on the porcelain. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, this has been great. You're going to kill me. I'm, mm. I'm barely getting over this shit now. <laughs> oh, my God. Mm. So, so how often mm. do you think that you would have to go to the bathroom on these uh, tournaments? Is it once a tournament? Is it uh, once a um, month? Yeah, it's probably, honestly, for me, it's probably once a tournament for sure. A, a couple times during practice, like for some reason, uh, my body likes to shit about eight o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what happened to me last year at Champlain, man. I was sitting there and they was fixing to do a national anthem and I got fucking shit pain. <laughs> and it wasn't one of them damn shit pains that was just like, oh, I can hold this a minute. It's like, that shit's coming. <laughs> like, it's working. So I fucking. I go about a hundred, only a hundred yards out in the damn lake away from everybody. And I pull my drawers down and I fucking shit. And buddy, like I, like I couldn't stand for national anthem. I don't know what to tell you. I know that's disrespectful and all, but I was shitting all over the place. But hey, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what happened with this year at Pickwick. I was there and I had to find like it's before takeoff. I had to shit. And I had, I had this young kid, this high school kid with me as a marshal. And I was like, God damn, dude, I got shit. And so I went to a porta potty up there, and it's one of them nasty motherfuckers. Somebody done shit and pissed all over the top of it. I said, Oh, fuck this, man. I'm, I'm just shit in the lake. So I go down there, and that kid marshals in my boat with me and everything. And there's a point out there, so I idle out around the point, you know, and go around there. And I didn't have nothing to wipe with. And like, I was like, Fucking hand me them scissors, everybody. And so he, hands, he pitches me the scissors and I cut my fucking whitey tidies off and I wipe my ass with the whitey tidies. You know, it's fucking one of them nasty shit. It's not one that come out clean, but one of them you got to, it's like you wish you had a half a roll of toilet paper because you got wipe 15 times. So, so I fucking use my whitey tidies and usually I got a half a pair of whitey tidies left whenever I got to use them to wipe my ass. So I wipe my ass and everything. And and get done, assholes on fire. But anyways, get done, go back, fucking fish the tournament, fish the tournament. The next day, I had fucking 10 people come up to me the very next morning before we took off telling me how this kid told the fucking world. <laughs> he told everybody about that experience about me having to shit, having to shit out there offside the boat before we took off. God <laughs> <laughs> that kid might listen to this podcast and say, "Someone's going to." That's what's going to happen. Someone's going to say, "That's oh, my, he knows who he is. Yeah, my nephew <laughs> he knows Jake." Who he is. Yeah, someone's going to say that. My nephew Jake is the one. It was the marshal. That'll, I promise you, it'll happen. That's the worst is when you oh, yeah. is when you take a shit and you know, like I did not. I don't. I'm not prepared for what I have to clean up back there. It. it you know what made Fuck. me laugh is when he said. It takes a half a to roll of toilet paper. By God, I'm glad someone else gets those kind of shits. Well, you know, they too, just like make you, shit. The more you wipe, just, the more you just it kind makes of it. move a little bit, and you're like, Whew. oh yeah, like you get a hot turd fucking come out, and somebody <laughs> just hop out, and all of a sudden it breaks off. You're like, fuck me, this ain't good. It's almost like it lost its momentum. Like you got to say a turd's fucking so long. 
it halfway gets out and then it meets <laughs> that, st- that little extra stay attached, you know, to pull it out. Whenever it fucking breaks off, it's like you ain't got enough ass muscle to push the rest of it out. <laughs> yeah. And then the, you, you're never clean enough. Like the only way to fi- fix that is to take a shower and start over. You're, ne- you're never going to clean that up. No. Never. No. No, forget about it. I like the bits where you don't, where you wipe, where you wipe one time and there ain't hardly nothing there. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, fuck. Yeah. I did the job right that time. <laughs> but but it, ne- it never fails. Like if I'm running, if I'm running, because we leave here at five o'clock to go to the field. And if I got a shit at like five till five, it 100%. It's going to be greasy and messy, and it's going to take me 10 minutes to, to do a two-minute job. Yeah, I'll tell you what. First time I ever went deer hunting, I was 11 years old. <laughs> went out there and wiped my ass with fucking poison ivy. No. Goddamn poison ivy went halfway up my fucking back, too. <laughs> no. Poison oh, ivy? I swear I got a hat all over. I wiped my ass with poison ivy. Had poison ivy on my balls <laughs> and halfway all the way up my ass crack and all the way up my back. <laughs> I don't know how it got halfway up my back, so I know I didn't drag that shit all the way up that way. <laughs> You might see. I need fun. You might see how far you wipe your ass with when you do it with poison ivy because you see everywhere the toilet paper touches. Buddy, I was not, you talk about miserable. <laughs> yeah, how was your pain? To- is that how you built your pain tolerance up? Was wiping your ass with? I reckon, buddy. I'm telling you, like I'm telling you, get get poison ivy in your ass. <laughs> no, and you fucking ass. Uh, see how that is. <laughs> no way. How long? What do you do? Because like now, all of a sudden, you got to put this lotion like in your ass. Steroid shots, buddy. Steroid you don't even fuck with the doctor. cream? No, fuck that shit don't really work. Damn, I've tried that cream and all that bullshit. It don't work. You're going to need steroids. What is it, calamine lotion or something like that? Isn't that what it's called? Yeah, I've tried calamine lotion a hundred times. It don't do nothing for me. What's it, I mean, on, what's it worse on? Your nutsack or your butthole? Your butthole, 100%. So the nutsack, it doesn't really bother you too bad. No, I don't like it. it no, I mean, I had it on my nutsack. My, like, <laughs> Half a dozen times in my life. I ain't never had no problem. <laughs> How do you get a half a dozen times? I thought this was a one time deal when you went deer hunting. I've had part time on my balls and my back before. It ain't no big deal. Like it's uh it's a little irritating sometimes, but yeah, let me tell you something, buddy. Like steroid shots. <laughs> steroid shots. <laughs> and- and a, and a Z pack there and prednisone or something. But how? So how do you get poison ivy on your nutsack half a dozen times? Well, you get it on your damn hand. You go over and take the piss, and then you fucking then that oil's on your hand, and then the oil gets on your pecker. You know? Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. I I I was envisioning you. Why out there rubbing my pecker <laughs> against the tree? Take what, a piss or something. That's, Good boy. So that's what I was envisioning. That's what I was thinking. Like, how the hell do you get poison ivy on your dick a half a dozen times? But if it's on your hands and then you grab your pecker, well, that makes sense. Yeah. I no. got you. So don't pee, like wash your hands before you piss out there. If you do piss in the woods, don't touch it, especially if you're around poison ivy. And I gotta imagine that that you're no uh, no pleasuring yourself when the poison ivy is is around your penis area. You're done for. Yeah, you're done. You're done. You're on the shelf for a little bit. Pretty much. But you can't not shit. So when it's on your ass like that's you're just gonna re irritate it. But I'm telling you, it's you've never <laughs> felt nothing more miserable in your life. And the shit's rubbing together in your ass cr- in your ass crack and everything, dude. It's like no win situation. Mm. Like at least with some whitey toddies, you can keep <laughs> your junk stable. But your ass takes it all away. You ain't got nothing to fucking like, oh, I guess I ain't tried a thong. I guess I could have put a thong on, but then you need like a thong with like a like a fucking instead of the flush, you need it to be like this wide so it covers your whole ass crack. This is a no win situation. Now I'm deathly afraid of poison ivy. I've never gotten it before. Thank God. I heard somebody, they burned the poison ivy and the smoke, they inhaled it and it that got happened. into their lungs. No, that didn't happen to me. We had a fire and there was, there was poison ivy in the, in the, on the wood and the smoke got in my face yeah. and my eyes swelled shut for two days. <laughs> my, my face is all swelled up. My eye couldn't see for two days. Jeez. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever got poison ivy, Jeff? No. Tony got it on his pecker one time. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. From doing the same way, had it on his hands and peed. No, he took a piss in Kingsville, Texas, at a somewhere we'd stop for something, and he stopped and peed behind a grocery store or something with my dad, and it was in a poison ivy patch. Oh. And he was in about fifth grade, and my mom goes, "Would you go in there and look at your brother's penis?" I'm like, "Huh?" No. Mom. That sucker was swelled up. 
I he thought, was proud of it. I thought we was going to start calling him Jerome or Muhammad after that. I mean, it was a big fella after it that It does shit. swell up. It does? Yeah, fuck yeah, it does. Well, it's like cauliflower on the side of your pocket. <laughs> yeah. That is not, uh, that's, nope. that's not appealing. Even if you could have sex with it. Like, who would yeah. want to do it with that on the side of their penis? Yeah. So. I don't know. Hold- I'm telling you, you don't want none of that. You don't want none of that. Could you pat? Uh, oh, fuck. It's not, not, not good. Um, that's not the moment that you want to go to Dollar General and get the love making Christmas candle. No, that's no, <laughs> no. Too much shit has happened. Maddie, oh, yeah. we're going to let you go, bud. It's been over an hour. Right, Jesus. We hope we see you in a couple I've weeks. I've the absolute fuck out of it. It's, it's, it has been a lot of fun. I appreciate you coming back on here. Uh, I hope you get down here with the boss guys, like Jeff said, here in a couple weeks. It'd be great to, to I'll s- say something to that. Yeah, and let you know, and I want to watch him give you the Dollar Gentro tattoo. Oh, fuck. And then we'll be in. Yeah. That's that's it. I'm telling you, the new Dollar, ladies and gentlemen, fishing for Dollar Gentro. <laughs> Maddie. Maddie Robertson. Brandon, show me the money. Show me the money. That's all you got to do. He said, he told me it's done. He gets it done deal. He's doing his end. He's, he, I know. That's the bad part is I know. It's done. I fucking know. It's done. I'm getting a tattoo of Dollar Gentro on the side of my fucking neck. <laughs> <laughs> all right you have a good day man we'll see right, you in a couple bud. weeks have a good thanksgiving all right fella. See you, but if there's anything you need let us know okay bye yeah same here bye, bud. Thank see you fellas oh, oh he's fuck. a funny dude greatness uh, pure ass greatness this sponsors this podcast brought to you by mossberg uh, the new 940 waterfowl gun check it out and by dollar gentral do you think they're proud of this conversation that we just had mossberg <laughs> yes or dollar gentral that was a lot of fun it was i'm telling you what he is uh He's crazy. Yep. Interesting guy. <laughs> great guy. Great guy. Great fisherman. Great guy. Oh, honey, let's watch the fisherman go out to do the guided trip. Oh, that guy's taking a shit. <laughs> Dollar Gentral. All right. Thank y'all. God bless y'all. Have a great week. See ya. Bye. All right. Go check out all of our great sponsors. Go check out Double T British Kennels, Ducks Unlimited, Dirty Duck Coffee. Use the promo code Big Honker. Save 15%. Stanfield Hunting Outfitters, Bangtail Whiskey, Alpha Outdoor Specialties, Hunt Proof App. Go set you up an account right now. Uh, the Looking Glass Podcast, Gun Dog Outdoors, Shin Gear Waiters, Lucky Duck, Pacific Calls, Dive Bomb Entries, Boss Shot Shells, and Mossberg. <laughs>